Coming up on DC News Now at 4, winter weather in the DMV, leaving thousands of flyers with snowwhere to go. How many times have you guys had your flights delayed, canceled, all of that? I'd have to Numerous. count them on two hands. We're live from Reagan National Airport with the latest on cancellations and delays. Bitter cold Arctic air is going to settle over the DMV tonight. We'll let you know how long we deal with this cold. Plus, see how everyone in the DMV is enjoying this snow day. I'm so glad. Then the Washington Commanders officially introduced their new GM. Here from the man tasked with turning around the troubled franchise. And a DMV-based CEO talks about going off the grid. It was more of a test for myself. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Tuesday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. It's another DMV first warm day, and that overnight snow is creating some chaos here in our region. Hundreds of flights have been grounded, and some are struggling to stay warm. Yeah, let's take a live look outside. You can see the roads. They were uh, more, certainly in better shape than they were, you know, this time yesterday. For so sure. That's certainly good news for folks. But again, uh, the roads could get more dangerous as temperatures dip below freezing tonight. And we have team coverage from across the DMV this evening. Randy Bass is tracking a wave of cancellations and delays at Reagan National Airport and Leonard and Fleming is speaking with DC residents who are without heat tonight. But first, let's head over to meteorologist Damon Madsen and Damon. We're looking at some dangerously low temperatures tonight. All right, we're transitioning now from all that snow that we dealt with yesterday and of course last night. And now we're talking more about these very frigid temperatures. But I will say one last check here of those official snowfall totals that became official pretty much this morning. That was when all of the precip wrapped up. Most of the area ended up in the three to five inch range when all was said and done and DC the streak is finally over. We picked up over an inch of snow for the first time in two years. The official total coming in at 4.1 inches there at Reagan. So now again our attention turns to this Arctic air that is rushing in as we go into the overnight hours on the back of these breezy west to northwest winds that are up to about 25 miles an hour already in DC and Leesburg and this breeziness is not going to go anywhere as temperatures drop. We're also going to be dealing with quite a wind chill factor heading into the overnight hours. Dangerously low wind chill numbers. As a matter of fact, it already feels like it's just 17 degrees in the district, but then out to the west, Hagerstown, Winchester, Cumberland, Martinsburg, all locations there feeling like it is in the single digits and this is just the start of this colder air folks. We are likely to see those wind chills plummet below zero as we go into the overnight hours. We have the perfect setup here. Clouds are going to be clearing out. We'll keep that steady wind in place and we have the fresh snowpack from just the last couple of days. All of those ingredients lining up for a very cold night ahead of us. We'll be down into the teens shortly after nine to 10 o'clock here in the district already tonight. So again, we're expecting those dangerously cold wind chills. How long will we be dealing with this colder air? And could there be even more snow on the way by later this week? We'll have a full check of your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. And right now we are tracking travel disruptions at Reagan National Airport on this DMV first warn day where flyers are facing hundreds of delays and cancellations right now. Last night's winter weather here and up the East Coast has certainly made it tough for trips and for those trying to get in and out of the DMV. For sure. Randy Bass is live there tonight with how the airport and passengers are handling it all. Randy, that's got to be tough for them. Yeah, Annalisa, Mark, the snow may not be falling here anymore at Reagan National Airport, but those cancellations and delays are still coming at this point. By 4 o'clock today, nearly 300 cancellations were reported here at Reagan National Airport. Travelers here are very anxious to see if their flights have been delayed at this point. Again, something that we've been tracking for the last day and a half now, something that's been very tough for travelers here. Again, last night's winter weather here and up the East Coast is what's started this domino effect of delays and cancellations, and it's made it very tough for people on their adventures back home. 
No, we were on the plane for three hours. Yeah. And didn't go anywhere? No, we were on the tarmac. No, then the flight was canceled. For Gary Hunter and Claudia Owens, it's been a tough trip from Fort Lauderdale here to DCA. After two de-icings of the wings and the runway being shut down, he brought the plane back to the um, gate and then he said, unfortunately, my shift is over. Tonight, they're hoping to get the rest of the way home to Boston. So the flight today was delayed as well. Mm. Yeah. So in total, how many times have you guys had your flights delayed, canceled, all around? I'd have to Numerous. count them on two hands. They're not alone, though. Between yesterday and today, more than 1,000 flights in and out of DCA have been canceled or delayed. Normal days flying is about 850 flights here on the busiest runway in America. That main runway shut down for some time last night, causing a big backlog of flights trying to come and go. Rob Yingling with the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority says hopefully the worst is behind us. We should see a little bit uh, more robust schedule as airlines recover, and there could be some, some cancellations going into tomorrow, so folks should check with their airline to verify the status of their flight before coming in. Yeah, and those DCA snow teams are still hard at work tonight heading into this evening. They'll be out de-icing the planes and checking for any slick spots along the runways. And even though snow's not falling anymore, there's still quite heavy winds we're seeing here at the airport at this hour. And again, those cancellations are still coming. We'll be tracking those here live in real time for you tonight on DC News Now. For now, live at Reagan National Airport, I'm Randy Bass. Back to you. Randy, thank you. And the winter weather has impacted trash collection throughout the DMV. Arlington and Montgomery counties will resume service starting tomorrow through Saturday. Residents should leave their containers out on the curb. Recycling collection in Montgomery County will also start tomorrow. Trash pickup in D.C. is running on their normal schedule. Well, as colder temperatures are expected to significantly drop tonight, the East Men's Shelter is helping D.C. residents who are experiencing homelessness. The shelter will provide blankets, hand warmers, socks, and other warming supplies to those in need. They plan to take people to any shelter across the district. The city's cold weather emergency remains in effect. Residents are asked to lend a hand if they see someone in need of help. We encourage um, uh, neighbors uh, and residents, if they see someone who is in need, to call the shelter hotline at 399-7093. Uh, and or 311 uh, with a description of the person and location so we can dispatch resources. Warming buses are also available at this hour. The shelters are open all day. Well, with frigid temperatures also comes concerns, especially for people who live in public housing at D.C.'s Potomac Gardens. They say they have no heat. D.C. News Now's Leonard and Fleming is live near the complex this afternoon, and he spoke with people at the Southeast D.C. apartment complex, and Leonard... This has residents on edge. Yes, the fear of freezing without adequate heat has residents on edge tonight. And that compounds the other issues that people are dealing with here that they are very, very concerned about going into the cold snap. People here at Potomac Gardens say heat tends to go out or flicker on and off when it's super cold. They tell me they have turned to other means to keep their units warm with space heaters or even keeping ovens on. Annette, who would not go on camera, says she has been trying to come up with ways to stay warm. In my unit, I have a multitude of boys and uh, we have to double up on blankets. And uh, we haven't gotten a winter here yet. We haven't gotten low temperatures like this in a long time. So yeah, I'm concerned. At this moment, I'm about to go to bread for the city just to make sure I have food to stock up just in case. It's a blizzard. People here tell me that they actually shut the water off today temporarily because they've had pipes, pipes bursting in this particular unit behind me, and that has been uh, of grave concern as well, given the cold snap. Guys? Well, Leonard, what is the apartment management saying this afternoon about their concerns? 
Well, the par apartment manager, the, the apartment manager here at, at the public housing complex, didn't have an immediate comment. But I just got a text message from the PR department for public housing saying they have addressed each individual's concerns and they will do it on a case by case basis. But that they believe the heat is fully working in this development. But of course, that's not exactly what residents here tell me. Reporting from Southeast DC, Leonard and Fleming, DC News Now. Back to you. Leonard, thank you, and you can stay up to date on all of the winter weather on our DC News Now weather app. Just scan the QR code on your screen to download it on your device. Also developing now, dozens of people who support Palestine were arrested inside the Cannon Rotunda on Capitol Hill Tuesday afternoon. They could be heard singing hymns and chanting ceasefire now. U.S. Capitol Police say they legally entered the rotunda, but that demonstrations are not allowed inside congressional buildings. It's not clear, though, how many people were arrested at this time. Well, turning now to sports from the California Bay Area to the DMV, the Washington Commanders new general manager Adam Peters is settling in nicely here, Mark. Absolutely. The majority owner Josh Harris literally rolling out the red carpet is introduced Peters during a news conference today in Ashburn. And that's where we find our sports reporter Brandy Flores, who joined us live, who was there when he was introduced at his new home turf. Hey, Brandy. Mark and Elisa, for the first time in a while, the DMV saw its first major snowfall on Monday. That same day, Adam Peters, the new general manager for the Washington Commanders, touched down in DC, his plane landing on a tarmac full of snow. And now it seems official that for the first time in a really long time, is there is hope for a great new era of Washington football. On Tuesday during a press conference, majority owner Josh Harris, along with Minority owners Mitch Rails and Mark Ian officially welcoming their new GM, Adam Peters, here in Ashburn. This is Peters' first time as a GM in the NFL. Most recently, he's helped build the current NFC number one seeded 49ers team, and he was a part of successful front offices with the Denver Broncos and the New England Patriots. And during that press conference today, Peters explained why he chose to lead Washington and what fans can expect. When this came, up, came about and I got to meet with everybody, Right away, I was all in. I probably wasn't a very good negotiator, but I told them <laughs> I was all in. And that made it easy for me to pass up other opportunities. But this was the best opportunity in my mind in the NFL. Whether the results come right away, you know, that, that's a number of different factors. But you're gonna, you guys are going to be very proud of the team that we're going to put on the field. When asked about what he is looking for in a head coach, Peter said he's not too concerned about whether his head coach is offensive or defensive minded. He is more concerned that his coach is bought in to what he believes and wants to run a successful, sustainable franchise here in Washington. And that head coach announcement could be coming very, very soon. So we are not even close to being done in Ashburn. We'll have more all evening long here on DC News Now. And of course, we'll keep you updated as we find out what is next for Josh Harris and the Washington Commanders. Until then, reporting from team facilities in Ashburn, I'm Brandi Flores, DC News Now. No.